following her father on weekend golf outings at Papago Golf Course, a precocious seven-year-old Heather Farr decided it was time to take some lessons. Heather just fell in love with the game and then it became a daily thing and I of course had to do what my older sister was doing and, uh, and then that, that's how it all started. Heather picked up the game quickly and won her first tournament when she was 10 years old and soon made an indelible impression on another up-and-coming local golfer. I was 11 and she was 12 and we were at a junior tournament and I got paired with her and I was not happy that I had to play with a girl and I made it very clear and I wasn't the nicest playing partner in the world out there and I remember on the 12th hole I walked in front of her on the tee and she hit it and nailed me right in the stomach and uh, she didn't do it on purpose but uh, I think that right there probably made our friendship uh, last forever. Mayfair and Farr soon shared the same instructor, Arch Watkins. In the following summer, the 13-year-old won the first of her women's state record 10 state amateur titles. When she won her first state title, that was a pretty big deal because she was beating top players that were in college. So I think that's when every, she kind of got on the map and everyone was like, who is this kid? This little girl, you know, beating everybody. She just had a, a fiery competitiveness, you know, that uh, you see in champions all the time. She had an incredible work ethic, uh, and she just, she hated to lose. <laughs> she was always determined to play well, she was always determined to win, but the thing I always noticed most about Heather was her walk. She had a, a great walk, she was always confident. As an eighth grader, Heather played and made the cut in her first LPGA event here in Phoenix, and when it was time to go to high school, Farr chose to attend Xavier College Prep. When she came, Xavier had a, a golf team, but we never were very extraordinary. When she walked in the door, golf changed at Xavier College Prep. Heather graduated from Xavier in three years, and during that time, she absolutely dominated high school golf. Farr never lost or tied a single match and won all three state championships. Heather's brilliance earned her an induction into the National High School Hall of Fame, becoming the third golfer to do so, following two of the game's greats, Jack Nicklaus and Arnold Palmer. She was the team leader. She was the fun person that really got everybody motivated to win. She had a good concept of winning. It wasn't just competition. It was win with grace, be a tough competitor, but oh, she was so nice to all the other girls she played with. Also during her high school years, Far won multiple tournaments, including two of her three AJGA Future Legends of Golf titles, the AJGA Tournament of Champions, and the USGA Junior Girls National Championship. She won everything as a junior. She really did. Her, her list of uh, accomplishments are extremely impressive. She was the whole package, which was really kind of funny because she was this little tiny 5'1", and you just couldn't believe she had all this energy and this enthusiasm. Following her prep career in 1982, Heather was heavily recruited by the top colleges in the country and fielded 17 full scholarship offers. The FAR decided not to stray too far away. Heather was the most important recruit that we ever got to ASU. I was a new young coach, didn't know very much and didn't know a lot of the junior golfers and I knew that Heather was the top recruit in the country and luckily we were able to keep her here in town and go to ASU and the good news about that is that she knew all the other young golfers and she was able to help me with my recruiting. She made me look real good back then. Just as she did at Xavier, Heather spent just three years at Arizona State. During that time, she was a two-time All-American and led the Sun Devils to a pair of conference titles. Farr was also the low amateur and finished 11th overall as an 18-year-old at the 1983 Women's U.S. Open. In 1984, Heather was the medalist at the U.S. Amateur and was the medalist and won the USGA Women's Amateur Public Links title. Farr also represented the United States in the Curtis Cup in World Amateur Tournament. If you beat Heather uh, in a junior or an amateur tournament, you beat the best player in the world. And if you did, enjoy it and savor it because uh, very few people ever beat her twice. After winning just about everything there was to win in the amateur ranks, Heather, in her first attempt at the age of 20, became the youngest player from the 1985 LPGA qualifying school to make the tour. 
What Heather brought to ASU and to the LPGA Tour was, a, uh, was an image. She was very attractive, uh, she, she spoke well, she got along with the, the media, she got along with other players, and uh, she, she brought a lot of attention to both ASU and to the LPGA Tour, which uh, at the time both, both, both places really needed a lot of help. Great competitor, little bitty uh, person with a lot of energy and spunk and added a lot to the LPGA Tour. Heather spent three and a half years on the LPGA Tour and was a player on the rise. When in July of 1989, her career was tragically cut short after being diagnosed with breast cancer. Heather would never play another round of competitive golf and eventually succumbed to the disease in 1993 at the tender age of 28. The following year, the LPGA Tour named an award after Heather, which each year recognizes the player who most demonstrates dedication and a love for the game of golf, qualities for which Farr is so fondly remembered. Young girls need to find other women who are role models and have the wonderful characteristics and personality and loving attitude that she had. The thing that impressed me the most about Heather was her attitude and the way that she treated other people and just the kind of person that she was. She was very kind, very warm-hearted, and loved to see smiles on people's faces, so she did a lot of things to have people smile around her. My daughter Tori, uh, I named her after Heather, named her Tori Heather Knight. Um, so she had a, a very special place in my heart. I remember having breakfast with her for the last time. <laughs> I really thought she was going to make it. <laughs> she, uh, she convinced me that she was going to be okay and that she was going to beat it. Heather still, to this day, 20 years after she's been gone, she's still my daily role model in how to, how to live your life, how to have fun. She had a zest for life that was pretty phenomenal. 